And Bob McNally joins me now. He is the founder and president of Rapidan Energy Group. And Bob, I want to take you back a little bit in history. Almost 20 years now, the International Energy Forum. Talk to me a little bit about, perhaps, the beginning. How was it back then? You know, uh, 20 years ago, Aetna, and I was very proud to be working for President Bush in the White House as his top energy advisor, when the United States was asked to join the International Energy Forum. You know, it met a crying need. You had IEA in the consumer countries, you had OPEC and the producing countries, and you had companies and experts uh, floating around. Nobody thought of bringing them together until, to their credit, Saudi Arabia and the other founders of the IEF said, we need a forum where we can bring together the producers, bring together con consumers, talk about oil and gas, talk about renewables and even transitions and so forth. And I'm so glad uh, Saudi Arabia made that proposal. I'm proud that President Bush decided to bring the United States into the IEF and since then we've only seen growth and its importance and role increase. And also talk to me about the widening of the dialogue here. You know, this February meeting we have the European Union dialogue, we also will have IEA, OPEC, and then we'll have IRENA. So we're also, it's not just oil and gas, this is indeed energy and it's all types of energy. This is the conversation they have to be, happening, they have to be having now. Absolutely. It is the International Energy Forum, not the International Oil Forum. You're absolutely right. And that's more and more needed because, you know, uh, at this February meeting and in my trips through the Gulf and around the world, it's all about the energy transition. It's all about, on the one hand, a desire to accelerate non-petroleum fuels and reducing emissions, on the one hand. On the other hand, doing it in a way that promotes economic growth, given that the world relies 80-85% on petroleum. So the need for pragmatic discussion and bringing all perspectives together has never been higher and the International Energy Forum is the right organization to do that. Now of course we're also looking at you know the role of renewables here but when you talk about that transition some people I think you know they have different time frames in mind and we really look I think at the practical situation here and look at perhaps possibly a slower transition than some people really feel like we heard you know talk about the aviation fuel this is not an easy one you can replace overnight so there's a lot of other things that have to be taken into consideration do you also think that the big energy companies the oil and gas companies are also embracing this transition perhaps a bit better and faster than they have in years gone by no question international oil and gas companies and energy companies see the public and feel that public pressure to accelerate the transition and they're doing so they're setting up uh, lead officers to take charge of the transition they are investing in non-oil non-gas projects and they're engaging in the IEF and other fora, G20 as well, uh, to make sure that the transition is pragmatic. But again, Aetna, what's really important and what the IEF brings is a pragmatic sense, as you said, about what's feasible over what time frames. One thing anybody who knows anything about energy knows is that energy transitions are multi-decade affairs, if not multi-generational. That's because of the scope of energy in our lives. Let's remember, as we know, energy is the biggest thing we do on the planet, bigger than agriculture, bigger than military. It is the most important thing we do, the biggest. So change in that kind of a sector is necessarily going to be slow, if deliberate. Now the G20, of course, this is the big focus on Saudi Arabia this year, and the energy conversation within that is also very important. How is the IEF and how is the, you know, the energy sector working together to actually bring around that dialogue for the G20? Never been more critical because in some cases you have governments and regions that want to rush a transition by inducing an implosion in the hydrocarbon economy or let's say the automobile sector by mandating let's say all electric cars in five or ten or fifteen years. Some things that if pursued aggressively could be harmful and counterproductive. You're hearing that today, uh, you're hearing that in this February meeting, you're hearing that those questions about being reasonable about the time frame. So as the G20 led by Saudi Arabia uh, takes, takes shape this year, and as the IEF meets, uh, it's going to be more likely and more important that we bring these pragmatic, wise voices who are understand the need for a transition and can bring that perspective, but can also be pragmatic about the time frames and the scale and the cost involved. Now, and like every international organization, there's a transition with the leader. And um, Dr. Sun has been here with us for so many years and really has been spearheading the great work of the International Energy Forum. We're going to shift a little bit and have a bit more American influence, perhaps, on this. Absolutely. I have to congratulate Dr. Sun on developing and, and growing the IEF. You know, I've been coming, as you have, for many years. 
the people, the attention, it grows and grows. I am personally delighted that my old friend and former uh, colleague in the U.S. government, uh, Joe McMonagle, will be uh, starting up uh, this summer uh, to head the IEF. I think the IEF is going to play even a more important role in the international energy discussion, and I think Joe McMonagle is a superb person to lead us there. I'm delighted that he's an American as well. We've had China, we have had America, the previous Aldo Flores, our good friend from Mexico, so we're, we're getting around to different countries, and uh, I'm very excited about where IEF will be going under Joe.